Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to create an advanced customizable water shader. This shader is very optimized and you can easily use it all across your projects. So let's take a look on the final result. Alright everybody, so here is our final result and what you are going to achieve by completing this video tutorial. So we've created a few material functions over here that will work with our water shader. And this is our master material of the water shader. Let, let me show it to you. We have a lot of functions over here. And finally, uh, let's drag and drop this mesh over here and let me scale it up to 50, 50, 50. So let me drag and drop my uh, material instance onto my mesh over here. So I'm gonna drag and drop. And let me show you what we've created. So we've created this water material over here. It has some raindrops over here. If you can see, we have raindrops, we have waves, we have depth, we have shoreline and if you start moving the customizable water material you can see that it is dynamic and it works with the environment pretty well just like this and it is pretty good so here we have uh, two layers if you want to draw something onto your uh, material uh, we have a foam layer we have a rain layer refraction and waves the first uh, option is the color in our main so here, the first water color is the depth color. So here, as you can see, we have some objects. Let me just zoom in here. We have some rocks over here and you can change the color of the objects that are in depth in the water. So you can do whatever you like. So the first color option is for the depth, all right? So you can tweak up the depth. The second color option is for the water itself, the color of the water. You can change it to green. You can change to whatever you like over here you can change to red water maybe you want some bloody water all right let me get it back to some bluish over here a uh, little bit like that okay we have a contrast of the water you can tweak up the contrast all the way to five maybe you want to see uh, the bottom of the water the riverbed or you want to diminish the riverbed something like this okay we have color depth this is the depth uh, color of the water how you want to be intense and by changing the parameters you're going to change the objects in the water depth we have the roughness of the water right now it is uh, uh, pretty refractive so if i put one we uh, we have no reflection on the water all right then we have uh, the shoreline fade. So I'm going to go here at the shore and let's start tweaking this up 50. We start fading the shoreline with uh, uh, with our mesh over here. And careful with these settings because uh, right now it's not looking too good. But if you do something about 20, now it looks pretty nice. You have a metallic, you have uh, the fake refraction. So. Uh, you can start refracting the objects at the bottom and how do you want to have them. This is the opacity. It should be one in order to work. We have a normal map. You can put uh, a different normal map for the little waves over here. So we have wave intensity, wave size. We have wave speed. We have uh, the color of the foam. So if you go here, you can change the color of the foam right here. All right. We have the foam fade, so we can fade the foam a little more. All right. The next is the foam opacity. So you can tweak it up uh, pretty high or pretty low. It depends on the case that you want. We have the radius of the foam. So if you put 50, we are getting the foam inside the water shader from the edges. So if I put 100, you see how we are creating a little foam over here. So if you want this, we, you have a settings for this. So let me put something around 20 because I want to have only at my shoreline. We have the speed of the foam right now. As you can see, it is a little animated, but you can tweak up the speed. You can boost it up, you can slow it down, all right? Also, you, you'll be able to tweak the size of the foam. You can make it smaller, just like that, or bigger. The smaller number, it means it will be more repetitive the bigger number it will means that it is a little bit bigger the next thing is the rain ripples i've included here some rain ripples and you can control the intensity 
see a little faster how intense uh, the ripples are here is the speed you can control the speed and you can control the ripple size so from here you have some small ripples over here all right the next thing is the waves you can control the waves this is pretty cool if you want to create some bench environment but the first thing is you need to tweak the overall intensity to one and you're going to start creating those waves and here you can control the wave height if you want more uh, small waves a little bit like that if you want bigger waves you can control the steepness of the wave over here that's pretty pretty much let's try with five the steepness you can control the wave length from here 512 bigger uh, length between waves or one to eight some smaller waves all right you can control the wave speed here let me try with one you can control the height of course of the waves you can control the steepness of the secondary waves those are the secondary waves you can uh, control the height of the secondary waves and the speed so this is just adding additional detail to the waves so if you don't want to have waves you simply put zero over here the other thing is the wave intensity inside uh, of our water shader so if we boost up the wave intensity over here you can see that you have a uh, more expressive normal map over here but let's try with something with 0.7 or 8 here are the waves this means when our water is not in motion but let's say here is there is a little wind over here you can change the speed over here let me put 0.5 if you want that 0.2 and you can control the wave size from here 64 creating very small waves over here or 512 creating bigger ones all right so those are the basics and the other thing that i want to show you is how you can paint on top of this so if i enable flowers this is a layer uh, with which you can paint onto your mesh and right now i have a texture over here onto my mesh and what you can do is go to the mesh painting tool go to paint and i'm gonna clear up all the channels and right now we are painting in the red channel so i need to have white color over here and I need to, to start vertex painting over here. So if you want to paint any textures on top of it, let's say here you want some, uh, some grass at the edges of your water, you can do that. And then you can go with enable the flowers layer. You can call it whatever you want. And there are some parameters. You can change the size of the flowers. Let's say you want one to 80. You can change the noise intensity. Let's say it will move uh, subtle it will move faster all right you can change the let me just maximize it the noise scale the scale of the movement uh, noise over here you can do it 512 1 to 80 see how it moves all right you can uh, tweak the noise intensity how intense this noise should be this is all for the animation uh, in order this to work with the waves uh, inside the water material and also you can say how it should blend if you tweak up the blend all the way up here you see how it start blending if you tweak up to one uh, you have this more of a bigger fade all right so this is something that you can do with the flowers layer and on top of that you can turn on leaves layer and leaves layer works with the green channel over here and let me go all the way here and you can see we have the same settings for the leaves layer you go to the green channel disable the red channel go all the way to the black let's fill it up so we can have this uh, previous layer and let's do a little white over here and start painting this over here all right so we've painted a little bit of uh, the second channel our leaves all right and here you have the same settings you can ena enable them and you can put the wave scale size so here you're creating them uh, to be little over here to be a little more repetitive you can tweak the blend power the same thing you can tweak the noise scale etc so this is pretty much about uh, this water material and what we are going to create in this video 
let me just turn this off you can turn off this layer turn off the leaves and turn off the la the rain layer i'm gonna minimize i'm going, going to go into my selection mode so this water shader is pretty much good optimized for your game and it has low performance cost and you can use it wherever you want you can create different variations of your uh, water material and create different ponds uh, maybe swamps you can create some beach etc so let's start with creating this water material but before we start creating the shader i want to make few announcements first i want to tell you about my in-depth course of unreal engine 5 blueprint system the course itself is 14 hours long and we will start with the basics advancing slowly into more complex stuff by the end of this course you will be able to create games without a single line of code the course itself is published on udemy and you can find a link to the course in the description of this video if you watch my previous video you already know that my channel is demonetized so i've decided to switch to patreon if you don't have the time to spend the next two hours with me creating this shader you can simply go to my patreon page and for 4.99 you will be able to download the complete shader by becoming a patreon member you support me and this channel to keep evolving to keep creating more and more interesting videos besides that you have access to all the files that i've created from the start of my youtube channel so right now you can download the water shader you can download the auto material from my previous video if you didn't watch it go and watch it and you can have access to more in-depth videos about how the things work like the auto material the water shader and a few more videos and also you have access to a VIP discord server only dedicated to my patreon members where i am active most of the time so if you want to support the growth of this channel and if you want to see more and more videos like this go to my patreon page and roll now and also you have access to everything that i'm creating thanks everyone also, if you are not aware, I am a co-founder and art director at a mobile gaming company called Seven Bulls Games. And for the past seven years, we've been working on a mobile FPS multiplayer shooter called Counter Attack. So far, it was downloaded more than 40 million times across Google Play and Apple App Store. So if you want me to make a separate video of how we've reached that 40 million downloads, let me know down in the comments. And I will create that video for you guys with a lot of in-depth knowledge on how you can grow up your mobile game. So by telling you that, I highly encourage you to go and check my game Counter-Attack. It is completely free. It is available on Apple Store and Google Play right now. Check the game, check the art style, check the animations so that you can get familiar what I've created for the past six, seven years. And if you enjoy the game, you can put a rating on it, five stars, maybe leave me a comment. So go to Google Play or Apple Store, download the game completely free, test it now and let me know what you think. Thank you guys. This video is sponsored by Metashoot, which is a new cool plugin for Unreal Engine. Metashoot is basically a twin photo studio for Unreal Engine. You can lit up your models in a photorealistic real-time studio and then click one single button in order to render them. The plugin itself contains a lot of presets and assets which will increase your speed and productivity by a lot. I've been playing with this plugin for a few days right now and if you want to create high quality images in no time or if you want to create a turntable images in 360 without working with the image sequencer or movie queue, this is the right plugin for you. You can find the Metashoot plugin in the Unreal Engine Marketplace and also they have very useful discord server where they can help you out and you can talk with the community over there so if you want to get this plugin you can find the link in the description of this video in the next few minutes i'm going to show you how powerful and how useful is this plugin for unreal engine users so let's go and take a review of the plugin okay so i'm going to walk you through the meta shoot plugin and show you the capabilities of this powerful tool so here i've set up a little scene those uh, things are from Quixel Megascans. And let me walk you through the Metashoot plugin, all right? It is pretty cool plugin that it will save you a lot of time if you are creating a product and you need to render it. Once you have the Metashoot plugin installed, you can show it by simply going to Window over here and then click on the Metashoot. Since it is a plugin, it will show up in all your projects. Now I'll show you how the interface and features work. So here the first thing that you need to do is you need to log in yourself, you know, register at the website, buy the plugin. 
and here you can activate it. The first panel is the assets. Here you have different studio assets. For example, you can add a rail system where you can hold the, the lights over the rails and you can move them like that. Here you can see how dynamically the rails are creating this light. This light is holding to this rail. You have a turntable. I already attached a turntable here, which will rotate the child objects. And how to do this, if I play my scene right now, nothing is rotating. But if I put all my objects inside the turntable over here, but right now you cannot do that. And you cannot do that because the object's mobility is static. And you need to change it to movable over here. And now I can put them inside my third table. So when I play, you can see that you can have a render of 360 degrees of your prop or object, right? Moving down the line, you have target, you have 360 camera and you have a DSLR camera. Right now I have the camera over here. This is my DSLR and I set up the angle. And the other thing is the target. The target says where the lights and the camera should aim. So if I start moving the target, you can see how everything is moving dynamically. One smart way to do it is you can put your mesh or your turntable in my case inside the target. So if I put it over here inside, I can just move the target with my objects and see how easy it is to move dynamically everything like the lightning and the camera. See that the camera is moving too. This is pretty handy, pretty useful. And the next thing is the lightning. Here you have uh, overhand lightning, which I attach to my rails over here. And you can pretty much do what, whatever you want. You can have a temperature change. You can have intensity over here to fill up. This is a big diffusion light, as you can see. Uh, you can change the color from the tint over here. So I'm filling up with a little bit of yellowish this time. And of course, right now, let me just select my DSLR. And if I pin over here, and let me just move this a little bit down. Right now, I can see my light over here. And how you can hide it? Just click Mesh Hidden in Render. When you do that, you still have the lightning option. Uh, it is working, but you are not rendering the light itself, the model here, into our shot which is pretty good, all right? So this is a little trick that you can do. Of course, you can have a softbox uh, 60 by 60. Let me just drag and drop it. And it dynamically attaches to our rail over here. And if I want to put it on the ground, it creates uh, a holder of it. You can see this is very, very useful and pretty cool. You can lit up your object in a minute or less. You have softbox, you, you can have a light wand, which is pretty popular right now with the streamers, putting some of this uh, inside the shot. You also can have a ring shot, which is pretty good for characters if you want to render characters over here. So another cool thing is that Meta should present to us some presets. And here under the Studio tab, you can choose a preset and you can instantly have a ready to render scene. And let me just select my DSLR and pin it over here so you can see how the lighting is changing. This one is pretty good. You can have a little darker preset. You can have a green screen if you want to isolate this, this a little red. And if you select the cyclogram, you can change the color from here, from the main color. You can change to whatever you want over here. The other cool option is right now at the top of our uh, cyclogram, we have nothing. But if you choose enclosure, it will close everything. So the light will start bouncing across our cyclogram over here. And you can have this pretty nice field light over here. There are a few other options that you can use. You can change it to a room, which is creating this uh, kind of room. And you can have these hard walls over here. You can change it to a dome, which is creating a little dome over here. Another cool thing about the cyclogram is that you can add fog and it can be unlit. So when you click on lit, the lights won't affect any of the cyclogram. I'm just going to turn it off. And the next thing is you can add a little fog to it. So when I click fog, you see how I add this fog and you can control it over here with this variable. Let's try with 0.01. Let's try with 5. We have a little foggy over here environment if you want to achieve that. And for our camera, the DSLR camera, you can have pretty much all the settings that a modern camera can have. You can select different resolutions, 16 by 9. You can have 35 millimeters academy. Here you can start cropping. You can change the focal length. 
as you can see here in my little window over here you can change pretty much everything you can change the aperture you can have all the post-process effects you can have the lens uh, filters you can have the film you can have the bloom and there are a few options that you can do by rendering you can batch render so here from the batch ren render you can add loaded items you can enable the turntable rotation and you can pretty much render a, a lot of images over here and create your animation after that you can uh, combine everything in davinci or premiere and finish up your shot so let's play a little bit with the scene so i can create a little moody over here so the first thing that i'm going to do is i'm going to select this light over here i'm going to move it all the way over here and what i want is i want a little overhead lighting i'm going to drag and drop it i'm going to rotate it also you can scale them up so if I use, for example, two, you can see that you can scale them up pretty much like that. But I want this to fill up a little bit the background a little bit more. So I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to scale it up to 1.5. And now I'm going to turn down the intensity to 20. And I'm going to select my DSLR over here. Let me see what it says. And now when I start moving the camera, you can see that the image, the point of target is there and my camera is moving with it I want to see the legs of this one and the one thing is I'm gonna move this lamp a little bit like that so I can have a little lighting over here but it's too much it's too much shining over here so I'm gonna tune down the intensity to 150 so I'll just have a little fill over here on the, the tile and I'm gonna move this a little bit like that to fill up like this and i'm gonna put it to 300 because i want this this one to be my main light and i'm gonna move it straight front over here all right so this looks pretty good and what i need to do over here is i'm going to go to my settings but right now i'm going to output an image so i'm going to output at the desktop and my render title will be 3d this is the name of the image that we are going to output you can have an output format of PNG, you can output to a MOV, like a movie, you can output to a MOV, which is a video, and of course there are render passes, and if you want to use the different passes, the base color, the roughness, the Z-depth, let's say the ambient occlusion, you can render them separately and combine them later on. So right now everything is set up and I'm gonna hit render. And once the render is done, you're gonna have this high quality image over here. See the details, see the lightning, everything is so crisp and Everything is looking pretty photorealistic and very good. So let me give you a few examples how you can use this Metashoot inside your projects or your work. Go to the Metashoot Venice XYZ. Here in the website, you're gonna have a little more in-depth information about the plugin, how you can utilize it, examples how you can use it. Here is the ring light looking pretty good. You can get the plugin from the marketplace. Just click here and it will redirect you to the Unreal Engine marketplace. The plugin itself is $150, but let me tell you how it can save you a lot of time. So if you are a subscriber for a long time, you know that I've created this game Counter-Attack Multiplayer FPS. And in this web store, when you are creating games, you need graphics like this. For example, this uh, character over here is rendered in Unreal Engine, but I manually placed the lights over here and you can see that it's not perfect. But with Metashoot, if you place your character inside the Metashoot plugin, you can render this instantly. It took me maybe a day to set up the lightning. And if I had this Metashoot plugin before, I could do this in a few seconds. Also, if you want to check out my game, go to the Google Play Store or Apple Store and search for Counter-Attack. The next good example that you can use this Metashoot is when you're creating a products for renders. For example, if you're working with a company that wants their product to be rendered for flyers, for posters, you can pretty easily do this in Unreal Engine with the Metashoot plugin and you can do the job in pretty much under 10 minutes. The third thing is if you are selling your models on websites like CG Trader or TurboSquid, they always ask for those nice high quality images and those images to be produced in Marmoset or let's say in Maya or Max, you need a lot of manual lightning and tweaking. But with Metashoot and Unreal Engine, you can just drop this sofa, just select the preset, tweak it a little bit and you can have those renders in under 10 minutes. So this is pretty much about our sponsor today. So let's hop in and start creating the shader. 
and now we're gonna start creating the shader itself and we're gonna start by creating the first the material functions so the first material function that I'm going to create I'm gonna create material material function is MF waves so we're gonna create the waves of our water so we're gonna start with a value I'm gonna hold one on my keyboard and I'm gonna put value of two then we need the mathematical function which is called P so I'm gonna search for math P and we're gonna connect our two to our mathematical function P all right so the next thing is we need to create a function input which will be a scalar parameter so I'm gonna right click function input and I'm gonna name this a scour, all right and for the name I'm gonna put wave blend all right and the settings will be like that and the sort priority will be zero all right and then I'm gonna divide the P to the wavelength and the value that we've put but first I'm gonna shift a to align them so I'm, I'm holding D on my keyboard to create a divide node I'm gonna connect P to a and I'm gonna connect wavelength to B and I'm gonna align everything now I'm cleaning up my graph of course just like that all right so this is the first step next we're going to create the wave speed input based on time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply over here and i'm going to move those blocks like that because we're going to create a lot of logic over here and then i'm going to connect my divide node to my multiply node and i'm going to align over here and then i'm going to create a new value for uh, my B channel over here so I'm going to connect my new value to the B channel and I'm going to put 950 so this will be the value of the wavelength when we multiply uh, after the division then I'm going to use the math function square which is a square root and I'm going to connect my multiply over to the square root I'm going to align again and then we're going to start multiplying uh, to the time delta time and to the wave speed all right so i'm gonna multiply over here i'm gonna multiply first the square and i'm gonna align everything again then i'm gonna duplicate this multiply node aligned over here with the square connect to b let me just move this a little bit in the back something like this i'm gonna queue again and in this multiply node i'm gonna search for time and I'm gonna connect it to A. Let me just align it like that. Time, all right. And the next thing is function input. And again, this function input will be a scour parameter. And I'm gonna call this wave speed. So this will be the speed of my waves. And I'm gonna connect the wave speed to my B channel over here, all right. So we have the wave speed and we are using the time and we are multiplying those. Okay, so far so good. So I'm gonna move them a little bit like that. The next thing is we need a function input for our direction. So I'm gonna create a function input and I'm gonna name it direction. All right. And this direction will be a vector three. And I'm gonna put for the set priority three so that we can control this in the master material or the material instance. And I'm gonna normalize this one. Normalize, all right, I'm gonna queue. I'm, I'm normalizing the vector right now and I'm gonna go from the division over here not from this multiply node so I'm gonna connect the normalize to A over here Q and I'm gonna connect my divide node to this multiply over here so I'm connecting it like that let me just clean it up a little bit move it like that all right so right now we have the input direction normalizing it and multiplying it after that we need to create a world position which will exclude the material offset so i'm going to search for world position we're going to exclude the material shader offset which is going to be an absolute world position all right so absolute world position exclude material offset i'm going to move it like that and after this when we have the normalization and multiply node i'm going to choose a function which is called dot which is again a mathematical function and I'm gonna connect my multiply node to B. I'm gonna align this one. And I'm gonna connect my material offset to A over here. All right. Then we're gonna create a subtract node. So I'm gonna subtract. 
and right now I'm going to subtract the multiplication over here where we have the wave speed to my absolute world position. I'm going to move this a little bit like that so they could align. And I'm going to put the dot in A and I'm going to put the multiplication here in B. After that, I'm going to create a Cosin function, uh, which is a mathematical function. I'm going to connect the subtract to it. And then I'm going to create one more multiplication node and I'm going to connect my cosine to the multiplication node. And I'm going to create another vector tree, which I'm going to connect to my B channel over here. And I'm going to make it blue over here. All right. So far, so good. And from the subtract, we've created the cosine, but we need to create a sine function also. So I'm going to create a mathematical sine function. And I'm going to connect the subtract over here to my sine function. All right, so far so good. We need to create some more multiplication from the sine and cosine function. And we need to hook this up to an output, which will be our normal. So let's do it. I'm going to create two more multiplication nodes. The first sine will go into A over here. And in B, I'm going to connect my normalize. So I'm going to hook up the normalize over here. And I'm going to start cleaning up everything because it can get messy pretty quickly so let's organize everything like that uh, move this like that move this a little bit higher all right and i'm gonna connect this like that so my multiply all right so far so good what we need to create now is we need to create the wave height and the wave steepness so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this scour parameter and I'm just going to duplicate it and I'm going to rename this to wave height. Height. All right. And this function will be also input scour and I'm going to put for the values 3001 and for the priority I'm going to put 2. All right. Then the next step for the wave height is I'm going to reroute. And I'm going to create a named reroute deprivation node and I'm going to name it wave height. All right. Because it will get pretty messy if I'm not rerouting this one. All right. So the next step is to create a multiplication node. And from this multiplication node, I'm going to connect my divide over here. So I'm going to move this and I'm going to deselect. I'm going to move this a little bit like that. And I'm going to connect my divide node over here all the way to A. I'm going to clean it up, of course. Let me move it up a little bit like that. And then I'm going to use the reroute node, which is the wave height. And I'm going to connect it to B because I want to have cleaner graphs. All right. After that, what we need to create is one more scour function. So I'm duplicating this one. And this will be my wave steepness. All right, and I'm going to give for the priority number one, and I'm going to put the preview values of 0.3001. Okay, so far so good. Uh, after that, what we need to do is for the steepness, let me just move this a little bit down because I'm going to need to create one more, a lot more things, actually. Uh, what we need to do is we need to create a divide node, connect my steepness over here to the divide node, of course, and connect my multiplication to B. And I'm going to clean this up over here. All right, looking pretty good. Uh, the next step is divide node should go into another multiplication. So I'm going to connect it to another multiplication node. And here the reroute uh, starts to kick in. So I'm going to connect my wave height also to the steepness. So as you can see here, the reroute is saving, my, is saving me. So create a cleaner graph. I'm going to shift A. I'm going to shift A. So far, so good. After that, we need to create one more multiplication. All right. And I'm going to multiply this into B. I'm going to move it like that just to uh, arrange it. And in order to connect this to our sine uh, function, I'm going to drag and drop my sine function over here. All right. And this is getting a little bit messy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reroute the sine function. So reroute. And I'm going to name it sine. All right. So I'm now rerouting our sine function. So it can be clean. 
I'm selecting my sine function and I'm connecting it to A over here. Moving further is to create another multiply node. I'm going to connect this current multiply to B. And what I want is from, from normalize over here, uh, I want to, to connect it to multiply. And what I can do is again, reroute. So I'm going to reroute this one too, and I'm going to name it normalize. Uh, this is just for me so I can have cleaner connection and I'm going to connect normalize over here to A. I'm going to Q in order for me to align them. All right, pretty good. So what we left on is here we have this multiplication node and we need to multiply and subtract one more time. So I'm going to multiply over here and then I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to search for subtract. And I'm going to connect this to A. And the B of subtraction will come from the multiplication over here that we've created. And everything here will be hooked up to my output result. Like that. And for my output result, I'm going to put it offset. So this will be my offset of the waves. What I didn't connect over here at the multiply node is the wave height. So as I've rerouted, it will be pretty easy and pretty clean to connect it. Just like that. I'm going to shift A. I'm going to shift A those two so I can align them and I'm going to shift A those three. So right now what we need to do is we need to create one more output offset and I'm going to name this, uh, I'm just duplicating the offset, I'm going to name this normal. So we need to create the normal logic also and I'm going to put it like that maybe over here and what I need to do is from the sign I need to multiply so I'm just using the sign. So sign over here will go to A. I'm going to queue this one. And I need to multiply from this multiplication node. And I'm going to reroute this to reroute. And I'm going to name this wave height multiply. All right. And I'm going to connect wave height multiply to B over here. Those reroutes are working pretty good. So right now we have this multiplication over here with the sign and the height multiplier. The next step is to create one more multiplication. I'm going to connect this one to A. And for the B, I already uh, create a reroute for norm normalize. So I'm going to hook up the normalize over here. This is for the B. And then I'm going to hook up a mask, component mask, which we're going to mask the R and the G channel. I'm going to connect it like that. And then we're going to hook up an append connected to A. And my append will go to my output normal. Now, we need to create uh, two more multiplication and one minus node. So I'm going to create one more multi multiplication. And this multiplication will be from cosine. So I'm going to connect my cosine over here to A. And my B will come from the weight height multiply node. From the wave height multiply node, I'm going to connect it over here and I'm going to clean up this connection like that. Here it looks pretty clean. After that, we need to multiply one more time. I'm going to connect it here to A and the B will come from the divide of the wave steepness. So I'm going to reroute this one too. Uh, wave steepness divide. All right, I'm going to move it like that. And I'm going to hook this up into B. I'm hooking up to B. Then, as I told you, one minus, one minus over here, connect it over here. And then we're going to connect it to the output of B. I'm just going to clean up a little bit my uh, connections. But right now, everything looks pretty clean. I have a little mistake here, which you need to correct here. I have an add node and what you need to add is append. And it is under mat append vector, this one. So I need to hook up here A and here B. I'm going to delete this one and I'm going to connect my append to my output normal. So you need to make this correction, not add node. We need an append node. And we are ready with our waves. And what you need to do right now is just save it. After we save it, we need to continue on with the next material functions. All right, guys. So the next function, what we need to create is uh, a combined normal function. 
just like the previous in our landscape auto material, but a slightly different. So let's start and create this. I'm going to go to material, material function, and I'm going to name it MF normal combine. All right. So this will be combining our normals. I'm going to double click on it and let's start creating it. The first thing is we need to create a function input and call it weights. So this will be the weights of the material. But right now we need to create a vector four because we're going to use alpha two. So this will be a vector four uh, function input. Now the next step is we need to mask out. So I'm going to uh, create a mask, component mask. And now I'm going to start uh, disabling channels. So the first mask will hold only the R channel. The second mask will hold the G channel, which is the green. The next one will hold the blue channel and the fourth one will hold the alpha. Now I'm going to connect the input weights to all the masks over here. So I'm just connecting to all the masks. And right now our weight will be connected to each separate channel. All right. Now let's start creating function parameters, which are going to be vector three, and we'll start combining the normal maps. So I'm going to create my first, which will be my normal underscore one. This will be vector three and it will hold those values. And this one will be masked. So I'm going to right click mask. I'm going to uh, disable. I'm going to collapse it. And this one will go to my mask RNG. And this mask will be multiplied with the R channel of our uh, weights. So I'm going to use a multiply node and I'm going to multiply my RG mask over here and connect it to A. And I'm going to connect my mask R to B over here. I'm going to move it like that so we can have a clean graph. And here I'm going to reroute, reroute, and I'm going to name the reroute normal one. All right. I'm going to use this a little bit later. Now I'm going to duplicate this one, the input normal one, and this will be my input normal two. It will hold again the vector three. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to duplicate my mask RG and let's spread a little bit those so we can have a little more space over here to play with. Let me move this a little bit down like that. Connect it like here. All right. And what we need to do is again, we need to multiply with the mask of the green color over here. So I'm going to duplicate this multiply node. And I'm going to connect it over here. I'm going to align it. I'm going to connect this to my A channel over here. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to reroute and I'm going to name this reroute normal underscore two. So this will be the reroute of my second normal. Now those two multiplications I will add together. So I'm holding in on my keyboard for add node and I'm just going to add the first one to the second one. All right. Now we need to continue on with the blue channel. And I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to duplicate this normal. This will be the normal number number three. All right. And I'm going to do the same. I'm going to mask RG. I'm going to connect to my RG mask. I'm going to Q to align them. And then I'm going to do multiply. I'm going to connect this to my B, align them, connect this to A. Now I will need to use this add node. So I'm going to align like that and add it to another node by using the multiplication over here. So I'm, I'm going to choose another add node. I'm going to put this in A. I'm going to put this in B. And now we are adding the R, G and B channel and we are connecting them together. All right. Right now what we left is we need to create our alpha channel. So for that purpose, I'm going to duplicate this normal again and it's going to hold the name of normal four. All right. And I'm going to do pretty much the same. I'm going to duplicate this mask RG, connect it over here, Q to align them. I'm going to multiply it over here and I'm going to multiply it by mask A. So far so good. But right now from the input normal uh, four vector, we will do a mask that will uh, just get the blue channel. So I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to connect it like that. I'm going to expand this a little bit because I will reroute and this will hold only the blue channel over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reroute and I'm going to name it normal for B channel. All right. For my blue channel. 
I'm gonna move this a little bit down. This looks uh, cool. And now I'm gonna append many. So I'm gonna search for append many. And I'm gonna start appending the reroutes. So the first one will be normal uh, B channel going to the alpha over here. Then the next one will be normal vector tree. And again, I'm gonna mask this component and I'm gonna mask the blue channel. And from this blue channel mask, I'm gonna reroute over here, reroute. And I'm gonna name it normal tree B channel. All right. Okay, so right now I'm gonna select the normal tree B channel. And I'm gonna connect it to my B channel over here at the third position. Now I'm gonna correct a few mistakes that I do, uh, that I did over here. Again, I'm gonna need to mask here and not just reroute it like that, but I'm gonna fix it like that. I'm gonna connect the mask over here. And this I'm gonna rename to B channel, all right? And I'm gonna connect this over here to my second uh, G in the append, which is the green. And I'm gonna do the same for my normal one. I'm gonna connect it over here, connect it over here. Uh, all right, I'm gonna Q, Shift A. And this will be again renamed channel. I'm gonna go over here and connect it to R. So right now I've connected O with the B channel and appended to many. And what we need to do is we need to lerp this. So I'm gonna hold L on my keyboard to lerp and I'm gonna lerp the RGBA. So what RGB will do, it will gonna lerp just those two. RGB will lerp those, those three. And we have four connections here using the alpha channel too. So I'm gonna connect it to B over here. And my A, I'm going to give it a straight number of 1. Now for the alpha, we need to connect the input weight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it like that. And I'm going to clean it up a little bit. So it looks good. You can reroute it, but I think like that it will look just fine. Let me just move it a little bit back. All right. So we have the lerp and append many over here. Now what we need to do is we need to add over here the normal three to the normal four vector. And let me just align this like that so it looks the same. So I'm gonna use another add block and I'm gonna connect this to A and I'm gonna connect this to B, all right? So we've added them together. And right now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna search for append, append and I'm gonna append vector. This time I'm gonna append this add to A. And for the B, I'm gonna create a few more uh, masks and multiplications, but here I'm gonna normalize, normalize the vector and I'm gonna connect it to the output so we can have the result. Right now we have an error here because we need to append with something. So I'm gonna do again a mask component and I'm gonna mask each channel separate. So I'm going to have the R, I'm going to have the G, I'm going to have the B, and I'm going to have the A channel. Let me just align them uh, like they should be. And right now I'm going to connect each of those to the lerp, just like that. And I'm going to start multiplying each of those. So first I'm going to multiply the RG over here. Then I'm going to multiply the multiplication with the B channel. And finally, everything that is multiplied, I'm going to multiply it with the alpha channel. And in the end, I'm going to connect it to my append. And finally, what we need to do is just save and continue on with the next material function. So let's continue on with the next material function, which will be refraction. So I'm going to right click and create the next material function. I'm going to name it MF refraction. All right. Let's double click to open it and let's start creating this refraction. So let's create the logic first. Uh, so I need a vector two, which will be a function input, function input. And this one will be vector two. And I'm going to give it a name distortion value. 
distortion value. All right. Then I'm going to need to mask the RNG channel. So I'm going to use a mask component, which will uh, mask the RNG channel. I'm going to kill them. After that, I will clamp from 0 to 1. So I'm going to use clamp. And I'm going to clamp it from 0 to 1. I'm going to queue. And then I'm going to multiply with an intensity, which will be the refraction intensity. So I'm going to duplicate this vector 2. And I'm going to give it a scour parameter. And I'm going to name it uh, refraction intensity. All right. This will go to B. And that's why I'm multiplying uh, the distortion value with the refraction intensity. After that, I'm going to search for screen position. Screen position, which is uh, a coordinates. And those coordinates will be added to my multiplication over here. So I'm going to add here. Uh, and I'm going to add the viewport UVs uh, to my multiply. Let's try and clean it like that. After that, I'm going to search for scene cover, scene cover. This is under textures and I'm going to hook up the UVs over here. Okay, I'm going to Q to align everything. And this add will go here at the UVs. After that, we need to multiply. I'm going to multiply and I'm going to multiply with a value. So I'm holding one on my keyboard, left clicking, and I'm going to put value of two. So I'm multiplying by two. All right, always keep those graphs clean, guys. Okay, everything looks nice. Let me just move it like that. I'm gonna move this a little bit like that. So right now we have the basic logic, but we need to lerp this. So I'm gonna lerp this one. And I need to lerp it uh, to a opacity. So I'm gonna select this one, I'm gonna duplicate it. And I'm gonna name it opacity. And this opacity will be also a scour parameter, not a vector. Uh, vector 2. I'm going to connect it to my alpha. Okay, so we are good right now. But what we need to add right now is we need to break the material attributes and make main attributes. So first I'm going to break, break material attributes from the material attribute, this one. And here at the attribute, I need to attach uh, a parameter. So I'm going to create uh, one more scour parameter. And this one will be a material attribute. And I'm going to name it input. Input. All right. And I'm going to connect it to my attribute over here to, to start the breaking. All right. And what we need to do is the base cover should be connected to B. So I'm going to connect the base cover here to B. Uh, it's not too messy. So this connection looks pretty fine. And I'm going to right now make material attributes. So first we break them, then we make them. Make uh, material attributes over here. And what you need to do is you need to connect uh, everything. And why we are doing this? Because we want to break the base cover and add this uh, function over here for the refraction. And then we hook it up to the material. So we are just uh, creating logic only for the base cover. And the rest will stay. So metallic will go here. Specular will go here. We connect the emissive cover. We connect the opacity. The opacity mask. We connect the normal. We skip the tangent. We connect the world position, subsurface, and everything until the end. We connect them. Uh, we're just recreating the parameters after breaking them up. So I'm just connecting all those. All right, a few more to go, and we're done. And right now, as we want to create a new base cover, what I need to do is I need to hook up the lerp over here, and the final base cover should go to my output result. All right, so this is pretty much about our refraction. Everything looks clean, so save it, and let's continue on with the next material function. Now, the next material function that we are going to create, it's going to be the blend offset. So I'm going to right click, go to material, material function, MF, blend offset. All right. And let's deep dive and just create this function. Okay. So the first thing is we need to drag and drop our uh, waves over here. So I'm going to drag and drop our waves and I'm going to duplicate this one more time. Okay. 
So the first thing is we're gonna create the wave speed, the wave length, uh, the wave steepness, and the wave height. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go over here to my first block and I'm gonna create the wave speed, uh, which will be a function input, function input. And this will be a scour parameter and I'm gonna call it wave speed one. All right, I'm gonna give the priority of number four and I'm gonna uh, minimize this one and I'm gonna connect it to wave speed. All right, so this will be my wave speed. The second one will be wave length one and it will hold the priority of three. I'm gonna connect to wave length. Next one will be my wave steepness which will be wave steepness number one. And it will hold a priority of number two connected to my wave steepness. And I guess you know what's next, guys, the wave height. So I'm gonna put the wave height number one. This will hold a priority of number one. I'm gonna connect to wave height. And finally, we need uh, a direction. So I'm gonna create a vector three holding three on my keyboard and connect it to the direction and after you connect it to direction I'm gonna put few values so 0.42 I'm gonna put 0.32 and I'm gonna put 0.22 all right this will be my direction so we are ready with the first parameters for my waves and now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna duplicate this one move it above and connect to my second wave generator is I'm gonna give different values. For my R, I'm gonna put 0 0.22, and for my G, I'm gonna put 0 0.72. For my blue channel, I'm gonna put zero, all right? And I'm gonna create those parameters again. So I'm gonna duplicate this one, the height, and this will be height number two. I'm just gonna change the store priority to five and connect it to height. I'm gonna duplicate the steepness, move it all the way up, select it and connect it to my wave steepness and the priority will be number six. The next one is to duplicate the length. I'm gonna connect it to my wave length and I'm gonna give it store priority of number seven. Continue on with the speed, duplicating it, placing it over here, connect it to wave speed and it will hold the number eight. So we are ready with the two waves and what I will do is I'm gonna add, add, and what I'm going to add is I'm going to add my offset over here to B. I'm going to align them. And I'm going to connect my offset of the second wave to my A over here. All right. The next thing that I want to do is I want to add a block which is called blend angle corrected normals. So I'm going to search for blend, blend angle corrected normals under MISC. And I'm going to drag over here and I'm going to connect the first normal of my uh, second waves and this will be connected over here. Uh, it's not looking too bad, the connections. You can of course connect them like that or just correct them a little bit better. Uh, it's not looking too bad so it's okay -ish. I'm just going to align everything. And after that I'm just going to lerp the A from here and I'm going to use a lerp node with L on my keyboard and I'm going to connect it to my uh, B over here. And for my alpha, I'm going to connect an overall intensity. And the overall intensity will be again a scour parameter. I'm going to name this overall intensity. And I'm going to connect it to alpha. Okay. And I'm going to give it a priority of zero. This overall intensity will be lerped with the blend angle corrected norm normals. And I'm gonna lerp this one, and this will go into my alpha. I'm gonna fix the connections, maybe like that. And I'm gonna move this a little bit down, so it can be a little bit cleaner. All right, you can uh, see the path clearly. And for the B, I'm gonna put my blend corrected normals over here. And for the A, we're going to create two values and append them. So the first value will be zero and I'm going to append, which will be append vector. And I'm going to duplicate this one one more time. And this zero will be connected like that to the first append. And the second one will be one. And I'm going to append it over here, right? 
just like that, a little block of some cool logic, and I'm gonna connect it to my lerp. All right, so we've lerped together uh, these appended values, we lerp the blend angle correct normals, and we are lerping over here the alpha for the input overall intensity. The next one is we need to duplicate this blend angle corrected normals, move it like that, and from the lerp over here, we're gonna connect it to the additional normals. So the next step is from this lerp, I'm gonna reroute and I'm gonna give it a name in overall intensity lerp, overall intensity lerp. So we can use this a little bit later. And here from the blend angle corrected normals, I'm gonna reroute again. And I'm gonna name it uh, normal, all right? And now again, just like the previous one, we're gonna need to break the material attributes, hook uh, our logic that we've created here and make the material attributes. So I'm gonna break them, break material attributes over here. And I'm gonna make material attributes over here, all right? I'm gonna move the output. I'm gonna connect to my output, I'm gonna queue. And for the material attributes, I'm gonna duplicate this cover parameter, call it input, make it a material attribute, give it a sort priority of nine and connect it over here. And just like the previous one, I'm just gonna connect the things that we are not going to touch over here, that we are not changing. I'm just connecting them pretty fast. Keep connecting them guys. All right. Now for the world position offset, we're gonna get the overall intensity lerp. So I'm gonna get the overall intensity lerp and connect it to the world position offset. Now the tangent won't be connected and the normal should go into the blend angle corrected normals. So I'm gonna connect this over here. All right. I'm gonna connect the opacity mask. I'm gonna connect the next opacity and I'm gonna clean up a little bit this graph over here. I'm gonna move this like that and I'm just gonna clean it like that. Move this a little bit back. Connect the emissive cover. Let's connect the roughness, the specularity, the metallic and the base cover. What we left over here is world position offset. And the next thing that we need to hook up is our normal. And that's why we've uh, created a reroute for our normal. I'm gonna put normal and I'm gonna connect it over here. All right, so this is pretty much about our blend offset. So I'm gonna save this and we're gonna continue on with the next material function. Now, the next material function that we're going to create is our ripples. So I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna go to my material, material function, MF ripple, all right? And let's start creating it. So the first thing that we need to add is our texture coordinate, texture coordinate, all right? So from this texture coordinate, I'm gonna create a function input and I'm gonna name this UV and this function will be vector two. I'm gonna give it a priority of one and I'm gonna queue everything. Now the next thing is our texture sampler. So I'm gonna search for texture sampler and this texture sampler will have the rain ripples and I already have a texture like that, which will be rain. And I'm just gonna drag and drop it here in the input. So this will be my rain texture and I'm gonna hook up the UVs into my UV of the texture sampler. Now let's start creating some logic. The first thing is we need to create a time so we can uh, base our ripples on time. Then I'm gonna create a scour parameter, which will be the time. So I'm gonna duplicate this one and I'm gonna create it a scour. I'm gonna name it time and I'm gonna give it a sort priority of zero. I'm gonna hook it up over here and I'm gonna align it over there. All right, so now we're gonna start adding and I'm gonna add this input time to my uh, alpha channel over here, alpha channel will go to B. Then I'm gonna search for math operation frac and I'm gonna connect to my add it. Then we're gonna subtract with another mathematical operation and I'm gonna subtract over here and I'm gonna use the value of one to subtract 
I'm gonna connect it like that. All right, so we've created the subtraction, adding the time and fraction. And right now, what we need to do is we need to add it to the red channel. So I'm gonna add this and red channel will go to my B and subtract will go to A over here. Let me align this like that. It's not uh, too bad over here. It looks still good. After that, we need to multiply. So I'm gonna use a multiply node and I'm gonna multiply it again by a parameter. So I'm gonna use 22 for my value and I'm gonna put it over here or well, let's do 20. Okay, then I'm gonna clamp it from zero to five. So I'm gonna clamp over here and the first minimum will be zero and the maximum will be five, all right? The next thing is we need to append the green and the blue channel. So I'm gonna search for append vector, append vector, and I'm gonna append the green and the blue channel over here. And I'm gonna move this append like that and I'm gonna clean up a little bit the connections so it can be readable all right so append will go here and after that I'm gonna multiply and multiply node will hold uh, for B2 then I'm gonna do a little subtract and I'm gonna subtract this multiplication by one so I'm gonna connect it to A and we'll subtract by one all right, after we subtract by one, we need to create a little more logic after the clamp. So I'm gonna move this like that. So I can align the logic over here. And what I need to do from this subtract, uh, first from the clamp, I need to create the mathematical function P, math P. And I'm gonna connect P to my clamp over here. All right, pretty good. Then I'm gonna create uh, create a sine function which is a mathematical sine function over here then I'm gonna create a little multiplication I'm gonna connect sine to b and from this multiplication I'm gonna duplicate and now I'm gonna multiply this in a a little complex but I need to go fast over here if we want to create this and the subtract will go to b over here and finally I'm gonna multiply one more time and I'm going to multiply it by 0.8 over here. So I'm multiplying uh, this clamp and the sine and the P and multiplying it again with the subtract and append of the green and blue channel over there. And finally, I'm going to append, append a vector. Connect it like that. Append will go to output. Uh, we have error here, so we need to append with a value. I'm going to put a value of 1, connect it to B and clean everything up all right that looks good i want to clean up this thing to looks a little bit better and what we are missing is we are missing logic for the multiplication of a which will be our weight so i'm going to duplicate this time and put it over here and i'm going to put a name weight and this will hold the sort priority of three and from weight i'm gonna just multiply add subtract so the first thing is multiply and I'm going to multiply it by 0 0.8. All right. The second thing is I'm going to do an add block and I'm going to connect it to A and I'm going to add by 2. Then I'm going to subtract, subtract. And I'm going to connect it to A and I'm going to subtract. And for the B, I'm going to connect my frac. So I'm going to do like that. I'm going to make it like that and I'm going to clean it up. Always clean up your connections. I always repeat that, but it's super important. Now, when we subtract, we are ready to connect it to my multiply over here. Now, as you can see in the preview, we have those ripples over here, like it's raining, which is pretty cool. All right, so what we need to do is again, save and continue on with the next material function. Now, as we have the ripple and we have the normal combine, and let's create one more material function, which will be ripples. So I'm gonna right click and go to material, material function, MF ripples. Open it up and let's start create some ripples. The first thing is I'm gonna need a time. 
and then from this time I'm gonna append many so I'm gonna append to each of the channel RGB and A append many and I'm gonna connect time to everything now I need to connect the whole RGBA gamma to a multiply node so I'm gonna connect it like that uh, let's do it like that all right I'm gonna queue this and I'm gonna create a vector 3 constant and I'm gonna put the values of 1 0.85 0 0.93 and this is vector 3 and I need vector 4 so because we are getting the RGBA so I'm gonna hold 4 on my keyboard and this will create a vector 4 so I'm gonna put 185.93 1.1 1 .1. all right this is my vector 4 and my vector 4 will go to the BO here I'm gonna Q in order to align them I'm gonna duplicate this vector 4 and for this one I'm gonna give different values of 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.45, 0 0.7 alright and from here I'm gonna create an add node and I'm gonna add my multiply over here alright and I'm gonna connect my RGBA over here to the B I'm gonna clean it up and of course I'm gonna move it a little bit up over here so it can be a little bit more clean then I'm gonna multiply and I'm gonna create the speed of the ripples so I'm gonna create a function input and I'm gonna call it speed and this parameter won't be vector 3 it will be a scour parameter and I'm gonna connect it to B over here I'm gonna minimize it and the next step is to create a frac and then split the mask so I'm gonna create a frac mathematical function and then we're gonna create mass component um, and I'm gonna split each of the channels so I'm gonna split R G uh, so this is R right I'm gonna duplicate this will be my G channel duplicate this will be my B channel duplicate this will be my alpha channel and I'm gonna connect the flag over here to each of them right shift A and right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reroute those and name them speed like that reroute reroute and I'm going to name it speed R I'm going to reroute speed G reroute speed B reroute speed A all right let me just uh, align them properly okay shift a to align them and those reroutes I'm gonna use a little bit later now let's work on the UVs so what we need to do is we need to create a vector 2 function input which will be a vector 2 and I'm gonna name those UVs and the UV coordinates are working in the UV coordinate system so we need a uh, two-way coordinate system and I'm gonna put X and Y so that's why I'm gonna hold two on my keyboard to create X and Y parameter which is a vector 2 and I'm gonna put values of 0. Point, uh, minus 0. 0.55 then 0. 0.3 I'm gonna create one more parameter so I'm duplicating this one I'm gonna put uh, 0. 0.6 0. 0.85 I'm gonna duplicate this one and the next one will be 0 0.5, 0 0.75, minus 0 0.75. All right. So right now, what I'm going to do with those parameters is I'm going to add them together to the input UVs. So I'm going to click Add. And I'm going to connect this to B. I'm going to click Add. Connect this also to B. I'm going to Shift A. I'm going to Q. I'm going to create one more Add parameter. I'm going to connect it to B. I'm gonna shift A over here and I'm gonna connect my input UVs to all the A's connecting to A connecting to A and I'm gonna Q Q Q to align them now what I need to do is I'm gonna create a multiplication node and I'm gonna multiply by 0 0.7 so I'm gonna multiply 0 0.7 I'm gonna multiply the vector the UVs over here and I'm gonna duplicate three more times three all right I'm gonna shift A and I'm gonna connect each of the ads to A over here and I'm gonna and I'm gonna Q I'm gonna Q 
So right now I have everything connected over here for my UVs. Here is a little bit messy. Of course you can fix it by dragging it like that and rerouting it a little bit like that, fixing the connections. So it can look pretty. All right, now it's a little bit more readable. So right now we have the time over here, we have the UVs. Let me just move it like that because later on we're gonna connect it. And finally, we need to create the intensity. So I'm gonna create one more scour parameter. So I'm gonna duplicate this one. I'm gonna name it intensity. And I'm gonna create a scour parameter. And now I'm gonna append many and I'm gonna split the mask again. So append many connected to R, G, B, and A. I'm gonna queue. Then I'm gonna subtract. And I'm gonna subtract by vector 4 because we have RGBA vector 4 and I'm gonna give it a values of uh, 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75. All right, this will go into my B and RGBA will go into A. I'm gonna queue this one. I'm gonna clean the connections over here. Let me just clean them up. All right. And now we're going to multiply by 4. So multiplication. I'm going to multiply by 4. And then I'm going to saturate a little bit. I'm going to use the saturation block. And from this saturation block, I'm going to mask the R, G, B, and A channel. So I'm going to mask component. And I'm going to start masking everything. R. This is my green channel. Let's do it for the blue channel and let's do it for the alt channel and let's start connecting it. All right, we've connected them and I want one more thing to do. I want to reroute this, reroute and I'm going to name it saturate. All right. Move it like this, move it like this, shift A, Q. All right, so I'm going to move it a little bit like that. And now we are ready to drop our ripples and start connecting them. So what I need to do is I'm going to minimize and I'm going to drop my ripple over here and my normal combine. All right, I'm going to maximize and let's, this is my normal combine. And my normal combine will go to the output over here. So I'm going to the output, still errors, don't worry. Then my ripples, the first one will go to normal one, normal two, normal three, normal four. And for the weights, I'm going to use the saturation over here. So I'm going to get the saturate uh, reroute node that we've created. And I'm going to connect it to weight, weights number four. All right. So right now, what I need to do is I'm going to reroute the, in the intensity over here. And I'm going to reroute. And I'm going to name it intensity underscore. And this will be R. I'm going to do the same for each of the masks, reroute, intensity, G, reroute, intensity, B, all right, and final, reroute, this will be intensity, A, all right, and we're ready to start connecting my repo over here. So the first reroute is speed, R, and I'm going to connect to my time over here. Then I'm going to connect the multiply to my UVs because this is the UV section. And then I'm going to connect my intensity and it will be my intensity R. All right. So this is my first MF ripple. We can add three more ripples. So you get the idea. We're going to connect each of the channel, but I want to clean up this a little bit. Yeah, just like that. So now I'm going to connect this one here. I'm going to search for speed. Uh, the second one was G. All right. And I'm going to search for intensity. Intensity uh, G. And I'm going to connect my green channel to the weight over here. All right. So the next MF repo will be connected to B. Again, I'm searching. Let me just... Let me just move those blocks a little bit down so I can have space for it. And those two, something like this. 
let me connect this one here and now i need uh intensity b connect it over here and i'm gonna need intensity here from the reroutes i'm gonna need intensity alpha here connected to the weight over here let me shift a and then speed b connected over here to the time and the final one intensity intensity a all right and connected to time now as we've created the normals we're gonna connect them to the responsive channels over here normal one normal two normal three and normal four and everything will work right now all right guys so we are ready with the ripples i'm gonna save it and let's continue on with the next material function all right guys so we've created bunch of material functions and the next one we want to control the color of our water so we are going to create the water color i'm gonna right click and go to create a new material function emmet water color all right now let's open it and start creating it the first one is i want to get the scene depth so i'm gonna right click scene depth from the depth field and I will be using the input mode of coordinates and constant input of 0, 0, all right? The second one is I want to get the pixel depth, so pixel depth, those two. I'm going to shift A to align them, and I need to divide the scene depth to my pixel depth. So I'm using a divide node. Here is A, here is B, all right? The next thing is I need absolute world position, so I'm going to search, right click, world position and i'm going to choose absolute world position including material shader offset then i'm going to search for camera position right click camera position in the coordinates camera position bs this one and after that i need object position object position position this one object position vs I need to get the object position and mask it to be. So I'm gonna use a mask node, not multiply, mask. And I'm gonna mask only the B channel over here. And the object position will go to mask B. And then I'm gonna append with vector two. So I'm holding two on my keyboard to create a vector two. And I'm gonna search for append vector, this one. And I'm gonna connect this to A and this to B. All right, now the next step is we need to subtract the appended uh, object position to the camera position. So we're going to use subtract, subtract, and I'm going to connect my append to B, and I'm going to connect my camera position to A over here. All right, pretty good. Then I'm going to duplicate this subtract, move it above it, and I'm going to connect my absolute world position over here to A and my append to B. So from the append, I'm subtracting two times and I'm going to align this. I'm going to Q and move it like that. I'm going to move the divide over here. The next step is to subtract from those two subtracts. So I'm going to duplicate this subtract and I'm going to connect A and B over here. And I'm going to multiply with the divide node. So divide node will be an A and this subtract will go to B. After that, I'm going to add an add node add node over here multiply goes to a and the subtract will go to b i'm just gonna align it over here and after we add we want to mask again with the b so i'm gonna component mask and i'm gonna mask again the b channel and connect it to the component mask after that from the mask i'm gonna one minus to reverse it and while i reverse it i will use a divide node and a power depth scaler so I'm going to use divide and connect this to divide. And I'm going to create a function input, function input. And this function input will be a scour parameter. And I'm going to call it power depth. This will be the depth of my power. And I'm going to connect it to divide over here. Move it like that so it looks good. Right now the connections are clean. I'm just going to move this a little bit back so you can have better connections more clean connections and after divide i'm going to clamp it uh, between zero and one so i'm going to use clamp the division let me connect it to the clamp 
pretty good. Then I'm going to create a contrast. So I'm going to duplicate this one, uh, the depth, and I'm going to create color contrast, color contrast. And this will also be a scour parameter. And this color contrast will uh, bring power to the clamp. So I'm going to search for the mathematical operation of power. Clamp node here, contrast goes to exposure. Pretty good. And those two, uh, the color contrast and the color depth, will be lerped into water color one and water color two. So I'm going to use a lerp. This will go into my alpha. And I'm going to create two more parameters, which will be vector three this time, vector three, because I'm going to choose colors. And this will be water color one. And I'm going to duplicate, and this will be water color two. And those will be connected to my lerp, to A and to B. And let's make it look good. All right, so we are ready with the colors. We are ready with the contrast and depth. And right now what I'm missing is make material attributes. Make material attributes. So we are creating the attributes for the material. And this lerp will go into the base color. The next one, we're going to create a metallic and roughness uh, scour inputs. So function input, do it like a scour, make it scour, and, and then I'm going to name it metallic. And I'm going to connect it to the metallic input over here. I'm going to duplicate it, and this will be my roughness. Roughness. All right, so we've created the base color, the metallic, and the roughness. Now we need to create the opacity and the normal map. So the opacity will use a depth fade mask, this one. And for the fade distance, I'm going to create another scour. And this scour, I'm going to name it shoreline fade. Shoreline fade. This will fade my shoreline. I'm going to connect it to fade distance. And the opacity will remain 1. And this one will be connected to my opacity over here. Let me cue this. And align it. All right. Pretty good. Let me just align everything so it looks good and clean. And let me fix this connection like that. All right, so what we are missing right now is our normal. So what we need to do is we need an absolute world position. So I'm going to right click world position. And we're going to use absolute world position, including material shader offset. All right. Then from this, we're going to mask. And we're going to mask the RNG channel. And from here, we're going to divide. All right. And what we are going to divide is the wave size. So I'm going to create a function input and call this wave size. And this should be a scour. All right. And this will go into the B channel of the division of the divide uh, block. And let me just arrange it like that. And for the wave normal map, we have something that is called motion chaos. And you can find it under engine. And you need to put in the search motion underscore four way chaos underscore normal. And you need to drag and drop it over here. So we're going to use this one, this node, in order to create this effect. So I'm going to go to divide over here. Uh, this is for the waves speed. So I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to call it wave speed. I'm going to connect here to the speed of this motion four way chaos. I'm going to move it like that. And the next one is we need a texture over here. So I'm going to right click texture object. And here for the texture, I'm going to minimize and I'm going to put my water normal over here. So we can create those waves. And it will be a sample type of normal. And after we hook up the texture, we're going to create a function input. And this function input will be a texture 2D. And I'm going to name it wave normal map. Now I'm going to connect my texture over here. So this will be the normal map for my waves. And I'm going to connect it to the motion four way chaos. All right. After that, we need to lerp everything. So I'm going to lerp this. This will go into B. And what I want to have in alpha is the water intensity. So I'm going to duplicate this one. And I'm going to name it wave intensity. Sorry. So this will be my wave intensity. And the wave intensity will be also a scour parameter and it will go to alpha. So here we will direct how intense the wave will be. And in the alpha, we're going to create a vector three and we're going to boost up the blue channel all the way to one. And we're going to connect it to A. 
And finally, from this lerp, we're going to connect it all the way to the normal. I'm going to fix this a little bit like that. And I'm going to duplicate this output. And I'm going to connect the lerp to another output over here. And I'm going to name this normal map. Like that. So right now, everything looks good. I'm just going to move this like that. And what we left to do is save and continue with the next material function. All right, so we've created a lot of material functions, but we have still two to make, and then the master material, and then the blueprints for the objects. So let's continue on with the water leaves that we are going to create. I'm going to right click. I'm going to create the next material function, MF water leaves. All right, this will be the leaves on top of the water. And I'm going to open it. So the first thing that we need to do is we need a world position. So world, world position. And I'm going to use this one, the material shader offset, including, all right. Then I'm going to mask the RNG channel, right click, mask uh, the RNG channel. I'm going to queue. Then I'm going to create an input, uh, function input, which will be my leaves noise scale. So I'm going to right click, function input. And for this one, I will use color and I'm going to name it leaves noise scale. And I'm going to put for the scale 10, 24. This is like a texture size. And for the set priority, I'm going to put six. After that, I will need to divide the mask and the input leaves noise scale. So I'm going to divide here. I'm going to connect it to A. I'm going to connect it to B. And I want to align like that. Then I'm going to add a panner. This is for the movement. I'm going to connect it to coordinates and then I'm going to need a time node. So time node. And for the time node, I need a leaves noise speed, the speed of how the leaves are moving. So I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to name this leaves noise speed. And here for the priority, I'm going to put five and for the speed, I'm going to put again five, something like this. Then I'm going to multiply, connect this to A, connect the time to B. Let me just align it to the time. And then I need to hook up the time here in the panner. And for the speed, let's do on Y, 0.1, all right? Then after that, we need to add a texture sampler and we need to use our noise texture. So texture sampler, all right? And I'm going to connect it over here to the UVs. And here I'm going to search for my noise texture. Uh, let me just go to my textures over here. Expand this one and I have a noise texture, put it over here and my texture is hooked up and from the sample source, you need to select wrap. All right. And we're done with this node. Moving further, we need to multiply it with a leaves noise intensity. So I'm going to multiply this and the R channel will go to A because we're going to use the R channel and I'm going to duplicate this one, this color, and I'm going to name it leaves noise intensity and the leaves noise intensity will have a value of 15 and we have a sole priority of four this will be connected to b let me just move it like that and after that we need to add everything to my mask rg so let's do an add node and this multiply will go to b and my mask rg We'll go here at the add node. All right, let's continue on with the textures that we want to input. So the first thing is we need a texture object. And for this texture object, I'm going to minimize over here, maximize a little bit. Let me just fix this. And I have two textures from Quixel and I'm going to hook up this texture over here and it will be color. And this will be my texture for my uh, things that will be above the water. And then I'm going to create a function input, right click function input. And this function input will be a texture 2D because we are hooking up a texture. So I'm going to connect texture over here and priority will be zero. I'm going to name this leaves B like the diffuse texture. And then I'm going to create a texture sampler. And I'm going to hook up. Uh, first I need to divide, so I'm going to divide. And this add will go to a division and I'm going to divide by the scale of the leaves. So I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to do it 
like a scour parameter. In this scour parameter, we have a higher texture, so uh, 2048, and I'm gonna give it a sort priority of three. So I'm dividing by this and putting it into B. And I need to rename it leaves scale, all right? And what I need here to do is my divide will go to the UVs over here and my leaves diffusion will go to the texture, all right? So we have right now the diffusion ready. The next texture is my ambient occlusion, roughness and metallic. So I'm gonna duplicate this texture sample. I'm gonna minimize and I'm gonna connect this texture to my second texture sample, all right? And the type will be masks over here. And again, from the sample source, I'm gonna select wrap and I forgot to select it for my texture sample. So I'm gonna select this wrap over here too. And for my occlusion, roughness and metallic, I'm gonna connect the divide also here at the UVs. And I'm gonna create a parameter just like this one. I'm gonna duplicate this one and I'm gonna name it leaves O for occlusion, R for roughness and for metallic. And I'm gonna connect it here at the texture slot, all right? And I'm gonna give it priority of one. After that, of course, we need a texture object. I'm gonna duplicate this one. So we need to connect it over here. Let me just arrange it like that. And I need to connect this one to my texture object. And it will be like mask, which is fine what we are looking for. And the final thing is we need one more for the normal map. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to connect my divide to my UVs. And now I'm going to start cleaning up a little bit this, not to look so messy, uh, something like this. And the next step is again to create an input leaves. And this one will be my normal. It will be again a texture 2D and the priority will be two. I'm gonna connect it to texture. I'm gonna duplicate my texture object, connect it over here. And of course, I'm gonna minimize and connect my normal over there. And the sample type should be normal. The next step is here at the texture sample type. We need to select the normal so that we have the normal map working. And again, the sample source should be wrap. All right, so moving further, we need to make those material attributes. So I'm gonna make materials attributes. And the things that we need to connect is first, we need to connect our RGB to the base cover. So we are creating our base cover. Then we need to create metallic. And right now I want to create metallic, uh, which will be zero. After that, we need to hook up the roughness, but the roughness will be from my green channel over here. So I'm connecting it to the roughness. Let me just fix the connection like that. Something like this. And then the normal map should go to my normals over here, all right? After that, we need the ambient occlusion, which is from the R channel over here, ambient occlusion. Let me just clean this a little bit more. Maybe like that will be better. Ambient occlusion like that. And then we need to hook up the make material attribute to our output result. So we need to expand a little bit more and I'm gonna create a vertex cover. So I'm gonna create a function input. And this function input will be vertex cover. And the function will be a scour parameter, all right? And it will have a set priority of eight. Then I'm gonna do a multiplication. And for the B, we need from the texture sample over here from the B channel to reroute. And the B channel, I'm gonna reroute from this object and I'm gonna call it ORM reroute. All right, now I'm gonna hook up the reroute node to my B over here. I'm gonna align them. And after the multiplication, I'm gonna move it over here. I'm gonna add, and I'm gonna add to my multiplier for my ORM reroute over here. Then I'm gonna create a blend power scaler. So I'm just gonna duplicate this one and I'm gonna rename it to blend power. And it will hold sort priority of seven. I'm gonna do a power over here, connect my ads to my base, and my power will go to the exponent over here. All right. After that, I will clamp uh, from zero to one, not to go beyond that. Let me just align those. And then I'm gonna multiply, and I'm gonna multiply by the alpha channel of this texture sample. So what I need to do is I'm just gonna uh, reroute 
leaves diffusion. Uh, let me just reroute. And I'm going to name it leaves reroute. All right. Leaves the reroute. I'm going to align this. Without this one. All right. And I'm going to hook up this reroute from leaves to my B over here at the multiplication. Now I need to duplicate this output result and call it alpha. All right. So this will be my alpha for my vertex cover. So in the end, I end up with my R channel connected to my reroute. My green channel is going to the ambient occlusion and my blue channel is going to the roughness. And finally, we have this moving a little bit shader with the leaves on top of it. So this is about the water leaves. Keep in mind for those changes in the texture sample that I did with the reroute, just changing the channels. So they represent the things that I want. And this is pretty much about this water leaves material function. I'm going to save it and let's continue on. And the final material function before we start creating the master material is we need to create the form. So I'm going to right click and let's start creating the last material function, MF form. I'm going to open it and we're going to start with world position. I'm going to right click world, world position. And we're going to choose this one, including material shader offset. And we're going to start by uh, not multiplying, but mask. And I'm going to mask it to RNG channel. Then I'm going to divide. And I'm going to divide this by creating a form size. So I'm going to hold one on my keyboard, left click, then right click and convert this to parameter. So I'm going to name it form size. I'm going to put the value of uh, 900 for my default value. And I'm going to group it under form. All right. This will be my group for the form. Then I'm going to connect it over here to B. Then the next thing is we need again the motion four way chaos. So I'm going to minimize, go to my engine and search for motion underscore four. And the one that we are searching right now is the motion four way chaos without the normal map. So I'm drag and dropping it here. And the coordinates will be the division over here that we've done. Let me just align this. And the next thing that we need to hook up is the speed and the texture. But first we're going to create the texture. So I'm going to right click texture object. And for my texture, I'm going to hook up my form texture. I'm going to go to my textures. I'm going to clear the search and I have this form number one. I'm going to hook it up over here. It will stay uh, sample type color and I'm going to hook it up to texture. Now I'm going to create the time node, the speed. So I'm going to go over all the way over here and I'm going to create time. And after that, I'm going to create a function input, which will represent my form speed. So function input, uh, let's call it form speed uh, with underscore. Let's do it like that. And it will be a scour parameter. And this form speed will be multiplied by the time. So let's multiply it like that. Move it a little bit down, shift A. And here, the form speed, I'm going to reroute here, reroute. And I'm going to name it form speed. And I'm going to hook up this form speed to my speed over here. All right, hook it up over here, align it like that. And we've created the speed of the form. Now, after that, we're going to create one more mask and we're going to mask the R channel. So mask component mask and we're gonna mask only the r channel connect it like that and by masking the r channel i'm gonna hook it up to a multiplication node multiply and then we're gonna create a texture sampler texture sampler and this texture sampler will have a different form so i'm gonna hook up the form number two and then i'm gonna multiply this one i'm gonna get the green channel over here to my a and for the B, we need to create a little bit more logic. So let's start. The first thing that we need to get is world position, world position. And again, I'm going to use including material shader offset. Then I'm going to drag and drop and I'm going to search for distance field gradient, distance field gradient. I'm going to align them. And then I'm going to search for vector to radio value, vector to radio value. And I'm going to hook up the UVs for vector or UVs to 
my vector radio value over here from the distance gradient and then I'm going to append vector and then I'm going to append the vector converted to angle to A over here and for the B I'm going to move this one over here and I'm going to create an add node I'm going to connect to B over here let's cue this one and we need to create a little distance to near surface so I'm going to right click distance to near surface over here I'm going to connect the, the world position over there to the distance to near surface. I'm going to align this. Then I'm going to use a multiplication node, connect the multiply over here. And then the multiply will be one minus. And this one minus will go to my A over here to the add node. But we need here a division, division, divide, connect it over here. And I'm going to divide by one. And on the B channel, I'm gonna put the form radius. I'm gonna create a new scour parameter and call it form radius. Radius. This will be the radius of my form connected to B and it will be divided by one. All right, so the next thing is we need to connect this add to my append over here. All right, then this append will go to the UVs of the texture sample over here, just like that. And the B node will get connection from the one minus, but I'm gonna reroute this, reroute this one minus. And I'm gonna connect one minus to my B over here to the multiplication. After we have the multiply over here, we need to create a bool. Then I'm gonna right click and create a static switch, static switch parameter this one static switch parameter and i'm gonna name it uh form form one or two so you're gonna choose between which form you want to spawn so i'm gonna hook up through over here and connect the default value and for the other one in the multiply i'm gonna connect the multiply to another multiplication let me just connect it over here and this multiply will hold a value of 3. So I'm going to put a value of 3 over here to this multiply. And I'm going to connect it to the false of my form. And by default, I'm going to use this one. So it will be false. And if you uh, switch the Boolean parameter, you're going to switch to the other form. Then I'm going to clamp. And I'm going to continue on with the multiply and form opacity. So I'm going to multiply the clamp and create a function input. And this will be a scour parameter and I'm going to name it form opacity. And the form opacity will be hooked up to the B of the multiplication node. And this will go into a second output. I'm going to duplicate this one and this will go into a second output, which second output will be the alpha. So right now what we need to do is we need to make material attributes, make material attributes. And here we need to create a function input vector three, function input vector three connect to the base cover and call it form cover. This will hold the cover of my form. Then I'm going to create a parameter, a value, which will be my roughness. And I'm going to put it to 0.75. The next one, we need to create the opacity. I'm going to create it by creating the depth fade. I'm going to connect it to my opacity over here. And let's connect the depth fade to be 0.92 something like this. And then I'm going to create a scour parameter, which will be my shoreline fade. So I'm going to create this one and this will be a scour one. And I'm going to put 50 for the value and I'm going to name it shoreline fade. All right. Connect it over here to my fade distance. I'm going to queue and we have our material attributes and then we're going to connect it to my output result over here. I'm going to queue, connect it gonna move it like that and there are a few more things that we need to do we need to create another texture sample texture sample and we need to search for white square texture I'm gonna select this one this is with Unreal Engine nothing fancy and then I'm gonna connect my append over here to the UVs after that I'm gonna create a multiplication node and the green channel over here will go to my A and I'm gonna get my one minus which will go to my B. And this multiply node will be connected to this one that we are missing. So I'm going to reroute, reroute, 
and I'm gonna name it multi multiply connection. All right. I'm gonna queue those and I'm gonna connect the multiply connection over here to B. So this is pretty much about the form. I'm gonna save this and we're gonna proceed by creating the master material. All right, guys, so we've created the material functions and right now what's left for us is to create the master material itself. So I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go to materials and I'm gonna select material and I'm gonna name this MM water. So this will be my master material of the water. I'm gonna double click and we're gonna start first with the water leaves, all right? So I'm gonna go to my material functions and I'm gonna drag and drop my water leaves over here. After we dropped our water leaves over here, the first thing to do is we need to create a texture object. So I'm gonna right click texture object, this one. And right now it is an object and we need to be a parameter. So I'm gonna right click and I'm going to convert it to parameter. And I'm gonna name this parameter leaves underscore D for leaves uh, diffuse or albedo. It will hold our albedo plus alpha. And I'm gonna name it one underscore leaves all right so this will be my first uh, parameter this is my parameter name then i'm gonna create the group so this group will be four and i'm gonna name it leaves all right the sort priority will be 32 and for the description i'm gonna uh, put a description that this will hold albedo and alpha this is holding albedo and alpha all right, this description is just for us. And now I'm going to put my texture from Quixel that I've got. So I'm gonna get this texture and I'm gonna plug it over here. Just the diffuse texture, the D texture, all right. So we've created the diffuse and what I need to do right here is I need to link it to my uh, leaves diffuse over here. And we are ready with the first parameter. So the second thing is I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to put two underscore leaves and occlusion roughness and metallic. Uh, we need to plug it over here. And then I'm going to put a description over here. This is holding ambient occlusion roughness and metallic. All right. And I'm going to put sort priority 32. I'm going to leave that uh, like that. I'm going to group it under leaves. And I'm gonna link this texture over here. So I'll link it, all right? Then I'm gonna connect this one over, over there to the leaves uh, occlusion, roughness, and metallic. And the final thing is we need the normal map. So I'm just gonna duplicate this parameter one more time. And now for the parameter description, I'm gonna put three leaves. And for normal, this will be my leaves. And here I'm gonna put description uh, normal, normal map. So we know that this holds my normal map. And what I need to do, drag and drop my normal map over here. It will automatically switch to normal. And I'm going to connect my leaves to normal. All right. So far, so good. Let me just arrange this a little bit like that to have uh, more common sense. Then uh, the next thing that we need to add here is five different parameters in order for us to control the leaf scale, the noise intensity, noise speed, noise scale, blend power, and vertex cover will be connected to another block. So I'm holding one on my keyboard to create uh, a parameter, but right now this is, not, this is not a parameter, so I'm going to right click and convert to parameter. So my first parameter will be the leaf scale, leaves scale. All right, and for the leaf scale, I'm gonna put a default uh, value of uh, 124. This is like uh, a texture in 124. And this will be again, uh, group number four leaves. You can choose it from the drop down, just like that. And it will hold the sort priority of 32. And for the description, I'll put this controls the tiling of the texture, texture, all right. So this will be control the scale. This will control the scale, scale of, uh, of the tiling texture. So this will control the scale of the tiling texture. This will be the description. And I'm going to connect it to the leaf scale. All right. I'm gonna duplicate this parameter one more time. 
and I'm going to put the next one, which will be leaves noise intensity. So leaves, leaves noise intensity. All right. And for the noise intensity, I'm going to put a default value of six. My slider mean and max will stay to zero. And here it will be leaves. I'll just delete the description because we don't need it. We know what this does. This is controlling the intensity. I'm going to duplicate this one more time. So let's do the next one, which is the noise speed, noise speed. Uh, I'm going to put for the noise speed five, five, and the group will be leaves 32. Everything looks good. Connect it over here. After that, I'm going to duplicate this one more time. This will be my next one, noise scale, noise scale. And for the noise scale, again, I'm going to use a default value of uh, 1K texture. I'm going to leave it uh, in the leaves group, connect it over here, duplicate one more time. And I'm going to name this parameter leaves, leaves, blend power. All right. And for the blend power, I'm going to set up the default value of one so we can start uh, with uh, one of the default value. And I'm gonna, going to connect the blend power over here. The next thing is to select everything, click C on my keyboard so I can comment this. And I'm going to put text uh, leaves, leaves. This will be my leaves. All right. I'm going to maximize this a little bit. So this will hold my leaves over here. And only the vertex cover is left. So we need a material expression, which is a vertex cover. So I'm going to right click vertex cover so we're gonna paint uh this leaves in our green channel so i'm putting green channel over here that we can paint off i'm gonna put it like that and i'm gonna fix a little bit of connections just like that all right good we are ready with the leaves now i want to create one more layer and i want this layer to be blending and be painted from the vertex data, from the vertex cover, from the red one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this one, copy and paste it over here, move it like that. Let me fix that connection over here. And I'm going to change the names here. So I'm going to use this MF water leaf again, but here in this texture, I'm going to go to my textures. And I have another texture here, which are some flowers and I want those flowers to be uh, on the water. So I'm connecting this texture over here. Here, I'm gonna connect this one and here I'm going to connect this one. And right now I'm gonna start renaming everything over here. So for these leaves, I'm gonna put like one and I'm gonna put flowers here, flowers, all right. And here for this group, I'm gonna name, uh, I'm gonna create a new group, which will be group three flowers. Those flowers will be hopping onto my water and I'm gonna do the same here. So here too, flowers, flowers. I'm gonna change this to flowers. For my normal app, I'm gonna do the same. Flowers here, change to flowers. And I'm gonna change everything over here to be flowers. So group will be flowers, leaves will go to flowers. I'm going to copy this one, uh, this flowers word, so I can paste it easily. So here, I'm going to select this one, uh, select the flowers node. I'm just going to leave the default value as it is right now. Flowers, group will be flowers. Here, flowers, group will stay again, flowers. And the final one is the blend power. So we're going to do flowers. And I'm going to add this layer to flowers all right everything looks good and right now i'm going to connect my uh, red channel over here and i'm going to clean this up a little bit so right now what we are going to have is when we start vertex painting the red channel we're going to get these uh flowers i'm going to change this to flowers and we're going to paint those flowers and when we start painting with the green channel we are going to get the leaves over here so far so good the next step is we need to create the form of our water. So I'm going to minimize, I'm going to go to material function and I'm going to get my form. Where is the form? MF form. All right. And we're going to start creating the form of our material. So for the form, we need a vector tree and this vector tree should be converted to parameter. So I'm going to right click, convert to parameter and I'm going to name it. Uh, this will be our color, form color. And right now I'm going to use white. Of course, you can change the form, form color to green or to whatever you like. 
and so I'm going to put uh, the group of five, four. All right, pretty good. Uh, those will be my default values. And I'm going to connect this to my uh, cover, form cover over here. All right. And now I'm just going to create parameters. So I'm holding one on my keyboard, uh, creating this one and convert it to parameter. So the first one will be my form speed. And I'm going to put it over here. And for the form speed, I'm going to put default value of 0 0.5. This will be the speed of my form. And I'm going to choose form for the group. And I'm going to connect it over here to form speed. The second thing is we are going to create the radius over here. So this will be form radius. All right. And I'm going to put for the form radius of 40. I'm going to connect it here at the form radius. The next thing is my opacity. Opacity. I'm going to connect it to here to the form uh, opacity. It will keep it will keep the group form. All right. And for the opacity, I'm going to put five. And finally, we need the shoreline fade. So this will uh, fade our shorelines. And again, I'm just going to duplicate this form speed. Move it over here. And form shore line fade. All right. So this will be my form shoreline fade. I'm going to connect it over here. And for the fade, I'm going to put a default value of 10. All right. So this is my form. I'm going to comment form. Now, the next thing that we need to create is our water cover. So I'm going to get my water cover over here, the material function. All right. I'm going to move it like that. And I'm going to start creating our water cover. So the first thing that uh, we have is our roughness. So I'm going to create a parameter for our roughness. The same, holding one, convert to parameter. I'm going to name it water roughness. And for the group, this will be my uh, water group. All right. And for the default value, I'm going to put 0 0.1 because uh, this will be the roughness of my water. And this is something that uh, I'm going to start with. The second thing is our cover contrast, which will control the contrast uh, between our cover one and two. So I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to name it water uh, contrast, cover contrast. All right. So this will be well, our water cover contrast. And I'm going to connect it over here to cover contrast. And it will hold again a value of 0.1 for the default value. And I'm going to put the maximum to one. Also, I need to set up for my roughness a sort priority of five and for my cover contrast a sort priority of three. The next thing is my water cover one and water cover two. So I'm going to hold four on my keyboard. I'm creating a vector four and I'm converting it to a parameter. So this one will be my water cover one, water cover one. And I'm going to choose a little blue over here, bluish color. Let's go somewhere, somewhere over here, maybe. All right. So this will be my water color one. I'm going to choose the water and the priority will be one. I'm going to connect it to my water color one. Let me just spread this a little bit so you can see what is happening. I'm just going to duplicate this one and I'm going to name it water cover two and I'm going to set the sort priority of two and connect it to my water cover two node over here. Continue on is my metallic. So I'm going to duplicate this one and I'm going to name it water metallic. All right. And for my metallic, I'm going to put 0.85 and I'm not going to put max for my slider. I'm going to put for a sort sort priority three and i'm going to connect my metallic over here to my metallic node the next one is my cover depth duplicate again this one water cover depth this will be the cover of my depth so i'm going to put a default value of 250 and i'm going to put for sort priority four i'm going to connect to my cover depth uh, the next one is shoreline fade the process is the same copy and paste it shoreline fade name it like that, connect it. And it's pretty much describable what this does. And I'm going to put 40 for it. And for the sort priority, it will be six Move it like that. Then we're going to duplicate this one, water, wave size, wave size, 
I'm connecting it over here and the wave size will use a default texture of uh, 10 to 24 and for the sort priority will be 7 and I'm going to create a new group which will be 2 and I'm going to name it wave so I'm just separating the wave size, wave speed, wave normal so this, this will be in separate group so I'm going to duplicate this one again and I'm going to name it uh, water wave speed so this will be the speed of my waves I'm going to connect and for the default value I'm going to put 0.1 all right so the water wave speed will be 0.1 as a default value so priority 7 uh, group will be wave I'm going to duplicate this one more time and this will be my wave intensity so wave intensity and for my wave intensity I'm just going to put 0.4 as a default value and keep everything as it is and connect it to my wave intensity over here uh, what I left is I need a normal map for my waves so my normal map will be texture object object texture object and I'm gonna convert it to to a parameter and this parameter I'm gonna name uh, wave normal map and this will be in my water uh, one and I'm gonna drag and drop my texture for the waves uh, water normal so this one I'm gonna drag and drop it over here and it will change to normal map all right I'm gonna connect it over here to my water normal and I'm gonna select everything comment water power main all right this will be the main of our water now after we have the foam, the water cover, we need to create the fake refraction and this is pretty easy. You're just gonna go to your material function and get to the refraction over here and I'm just gonna duplicate this parameter and use it for the opacity of my uh, refractions. I'm going to connect it over here and I'm gonna name it refraction opacity opacity and I'm gonna use 0 0.8 and my max will be 1 and my slider for the min will be 5 and this will go into the water main and for the sort priority I'm gonna put 32 I'm just gonna duplicate this one and I'm gonna connect it to my intensity over here and I'm gonna name it refraction intensity intensity and this will be uh, 1 my min will be 0 and my max will be 1 and I'm gonna put it in water and my sort priority will be 8 so we're gonna control this intensity and now for uh, in order to work this refraction we are going to connect my water color normal to the distortion value and my result to my input I'm just gonna clean up this by moving it like that and commenting refraction refraction I'm going to move it like that and I'm going to start cleaning up a little bit those connections because it looks pretty messy right now. So I'm just going to connect it like that. All right, so we've created the water color uh, main material foam refraction. Now we need to start blending those uh, three. The first thing is I'm going to create a static parameter switch. So right click static uh, switch, static switch parameter, this one. And I'm going to name it refraction, refraction on off. So from this parameter, you'll be able to turn it on or off. And I'm going to name it tools. So this will uh, activate and deactivate uh, my uh, refraction. So I'm going to connect the result over here to the false section. All right. By default, I'm going to make it true. And my true will come from the result of the refraction over here. So this is how we're gonna uh, enable and disable our refraction if we need it. The next thing is we need to blend it with the foam. So I'm gonna need a blend material attribute, right click, blend material attribute. And from the alpha, I want to get the alpha result of the foam. And the result from this foam should need to go to B. And I'm going to blend it with this one in A. All right, pretty good. The next thing is I'm going to duplicate this parameter and I'm going to do the same. Do we need foam or not? So foam, foam, on, off. And from here we can turn on and turn off the foam. So if it's true, 
the form will be uh, working. If it's false, we're going to use the refraction, but if the refraction is false, we are not going to use also the refraction. So I'm going to clean up this mess around here. Pretty good. Let me just clean up this one too. Like that. Like that. Right. I'm going to queue those to have cleaner uh, connections. Something like this. All right. Pretty good. Now these forms should start blending with our flowers over here. So I'm going to move my flowers all the way down over here and I'm going to move the leaves in the vertex paint cover a little bit down, right? Something like this. So again, I'm going to create a blend material attribute over here. And in my A, I'm going to put the form over here so it can blend. My alpha will be go here and the result will go over here. All right. So I'm going to clean up this one too. This is our flowers. Let me just clean it up. Q. All right. I'm just going to move this one further so we can see how the connections are uh, moving. So right now we're going to blend everything here with the flowers. And of course, I'm going to create one more uh, static switch parameter. Do we need flowers or not? So if it's true, we need them and it will work. If it's false, I'm going to get from the form on and off. So we can skip this one. By default, I'm going to leave it uh, to true. And I'm going to name this flowers, flowers on off. All right. It will be again under tools. And as you may expect it to make the same for the leaves. So again, blend. This will go into my A over here. Now we're going to select the alpha. I'm going to connect it over here. And I'm going to connect the result in B. And I'm going to clean up this a little bit like that. This is connected. Cool. And we're going to create another static switch parameter. Do we need the leaves or not? Connected to true. I'm going to queue. I'm going to name this leaves on and off. If it's false, we go with the flowers. And now what's left is to create the rain itself. So I'm going to drop my MF ripples over here so we can create the rain and start blending it uh, with the leaves. So this will be my MF ripples and I'm going to duplicate one parameter over here, move it over there. And the first one will be the ripples intensity. Oops. So ripples intensity and I'm going to put an intensity of three. And I'm going to create a new group, which will be six. And I'm going to call it rain. All right. It will hold the sort priority of 32. And I'm going to connect it to intensity over here. The next one is the speed. So this will be my uh, ripples speed. Speed. And for the speed, I'm going to put one. And it will be also in my group six. And connected to my speed. The next one is my UVs and for the UVs we're going to uh, need a world position and it will use the material shader offset. Then I'm going to mask the R and G channel. So I'm going to search for mask and I'm going to mask the R and G channel connected over here, connected to my mask. I'm going to queue over here. Then I'm going to divide this one. Because I will need a ripple, uh, ripple size, I'm going to uh, create the size of the ripple. And I'm going to duplicate uh, this parameter. I'm going to name it ripple size so we can define the size of our ripples. I'm going to put uh, 512 for my size. It's going to be in the rain. I'm going to connect it to my divide. And my divide will be connected to my UV over here. I'm going to move this a little bit down. A little bit like that. Shift A. I'm going to comment this rain. All right. And we need to create one more node. I'm going to move this a little bit down. And the node is called material layer blend underscore normal blend. This one. And we need to connect our result to the normal map. Over here. And right now our leaves, I'm going to move them a little bit down like that. And I'm going to connect our leaves to our material. And I'm going to duplicate this leaves boolean and create one more for the rain. So do we need rain on and off? And if we need to be true over here, I'm just going to, uh, by default, turn it off. It will be true over here. And for the false, 
I'm going to connect my leaves over there. And I'm just going to queue this one with everything over here. Let me just select it here so we can align it. So right now, do we need to turn the rain on and off? Uh, we'll be redirected by this parameter. And the final thing that we need to create is our waves. So I'm just going to minimize here and I'm going to search for my blend offset, this one. We're going to create parameters for the blend offset and we're going to connect it to a new parameter, static switch, which I'm going to call waves, waves. And by default, I'm going to enable this one. And the result will be over here at true. And if it's false, I'm going to connect the rain over here. So this will tell us if we want waves or not. Let me just move this a little bit up because we need to connect the parameters. All right, now we should create the parameters for this one. So I'm going to duplicate this one, move it here. And the first one will be overall intensity, overall intensity. And I'm going to put it to one, the, the slider to max will be one. And I'm going to create a new group, which will be group seven. And I'm going to name it water waves, water waves. All right. And I'm going to connect it to overall intensity. The second one will be my wave height, wave height. And the wave height will have a default value of two. And I'm not going to put a max. It will be under seven. And I'm going to put sort priority of one so we can control the wave height. I'm going to connect it over here. Moving further is the steepness. Duplicate this one. Wave steepness. I'm going to put 0 0.4 for the steepness and sort priority of two. And I'm going to connect it to my wave steepness. The next one is wave length. And for the wave length, I'm going to put 450. And I'm going to change the sort priority to three. Connect it over here, wave length. Moving further is the wave speed, wave speed. And I'm gonna put one for my wave speed and priority will be four, connect it to my wave speed over here. Now I'm gonna duplicate this one and this will be my wave height two, wave height two, my second wave height. So I'm gonna change here, wave height one, wave height two, connect it over here. Sort priority will be five. And I'm going to keep one as a default value. Let me just move this a little bit up, maybe further them a little bit more. Now we have the wave steepness number two. So I'm going to put here number one, I'm going to duplicate. This will be the steepness number two. So let's change the name to number two. All right. And the steepness will be the previous one was. 0.4 all right and the sort priority will be six over here in the second wave steepness we have the next wavelength so i'm just gonna fix this one to wavelength underscore one wavelength underscore two i'm gonna change the sort priority to seven as this was six seven all right wavelength two then we have the wavelength speed which is the second speed this will be my first this will be my second and this is uh, sort priority seven. This will be sort priority eight and I'm going to connect it to my wave speed over here. I'm just going to move those a little bit up because I need to connect the input and I'm going to name this uh, water waves. All right. Water waves is a good name for it. Now what we have here is we need to correct connect the rain over here to my input. And we already connected the result to my uh, boolean over here, to my static switch parameter. And finally, what we need to uh, create here in the water is we need to select the blend mode to be translucent. Translucent, all right. And this should be default lid. And I'm going to click use material attributes, all right. And we connect the wave to my MM water material over here. And we're pretty much done with our water material over here. You can see how we have the water, we have some refractions, etc. We're going to see this in action pretty soon. But before that, save your master material and let's start creating material instances. All right, so everything is working. We've created our water material. And finally, let me show you how you can create a material instance like this. So we're going to right click over here and click create material instance. And once you create your material instance, let's say this is our swamp. So I'm going to name it MI swamp. I'm going to double click 
in all the settings that we've created in our master material or expose over here and you can start tweaking them up you can start turning on every layer you want and here from the settings you can start tweaking them up let me show you how i've created this one uh, this is a material instance which is an example number two if you want my examples join my patreon everything is uploaded there so when i open it i've used the flowers on off and all the settings over here i've changed a little color over here to get this uh, swamp looking and you can change it whatever you like you can make it a little bit darker the first color is the color of our depth then the second color is the actual color of our swamp so let me just make it a little bit darker and right now i've activated the flowers and the leaves uh, layer so what you can do is you can go to the uh, mesh paint go to the paint and disable the green and the blue channel go into the black mode click fill i'm gonna fill the same black color to the green channel so i can have clean mesh over here and if you want to start painting some of the layers that we have created over here the flowers and the and the leaves the flowers are uh, the leaves are on the second channel which is the green channel and the flowers are on the first channel which is the red channel so right now i'm going to start painting this one uh, the leaves over here into my water and as you can see we've painted some and when i go to my uh, leaves let's go to the leaves you can start uh, tweaking some settings so let's try with 520 so here you can see that we've uh, make it bigger 64 make it small you can tweak the blend power over here how it should blend with your water right you can change the noise over here this is the noise intensity you can change the noise scale you can change the uh, wave noise speed right so this is how you can paint uh, the leaves and if i switch to the red channel you can start painting the flowers right those are the flowers uh, let me just scroll it down a little bit and you can start tweaking the parameters again 64 to make it a little bit more rep repetitive you can tweak up the blend power etc and from all those settings you can start playing and tweaking if you don't want to have this rain just turn it off over here wait a little bit so it can compile and right now you're gonna get rid of the rain itself of course you have some settings for the foam and from this switch you can choose which foam to use so if you turn it off you're gonna choose the first foam over here as you can see let me just go into my selection mode we have different forms over here a little bit different and if you click over here we're gonna switch to the next foam and everything is dynamic so if you work with this you can see that every object that we put inside our water is dynamically working and you can have uh, the foam around it you can have the refraction inside the object to be different so you can go and control the refraction so this is pretty much how you can create a material instance and work with it i've created two material instances that can be used as a base so this was the first one and this is my second example let me just clear up the paint layers and this is the second material that i've created over here it's a little bit clean water with a lot of uh, wind and some rains all right guys so this is how you can create material instance and you can create as many material instances as you need for your project if you like creating this water shader and you want to support me to keep creating more videos like this go to my patreon page choose a tier and support the channel thank you guys i hope this water shader will be useful for you Feel free to use it all across your games. Thank you guys for watching. Happy game development. See you in the next video.